Uh, the reason like I won't be supporting nor voting for Trump is because I feel that he scapegoats and attacks those groups who can't really protect themselves. If it wasn't for Trump's rhetoric, I could vote for him simply because I think they're Republican Party registration. And uh, Republican Party, take note. I think you're going to see a whole lot more of these. I've been a Republican all my life. But I will never be a Republican again. We're here at the Carnegie Coffee in Carnegie, Pennsylvania. All of you voted for Donald Trump for president. Yes. Yes. How many of you did what Donald Trump wanted you to do when he spoke here over the weekend and vote for the Republican candidate for Congress? And how many of you switched and voted for the Democrat? What made you decide? not to vote for the Republican candidate. You're a lifelong Republican, voted for Donald Trump. Why'd you switch? I made the decision very early on in the campaign. I thought that Connor Lamb was the best candidate based on his priorities and his background, and I think we needed some new blood in, in Congress. Steve, you're a registered Democrat, but yes. you switched to vote for Donald Trump for president. Yes. Because you want to change. Yes. And Donald Trump said, okay, vote for Chacone if you continue to want change. Did you not agree with and believe in that message? I stopped believing Donald Trump six months ago. And why? I just don't trust anything he does. I, I'm a vet, and uh, I'm, I'm actually ashamed of my saying to polls, and I'm ashamed to be a vet. I'm ashamed to be part of the country sometimes. So is that one of the reasons you didn't vote for this candidate, Chacone? Not, right, I think it's time for a change. I mean, another change? Another change. You voted for Millennial women are leaving the GOP in droves. Let's get right to the stats. Between 2002 and 2017, millennial women who identify as Democrat grew from 54% to 70%. According to a new Pew Research poll, conversely, 23% of millennial women now identify as Republican as compared to 36% in 2002. The amount of millennial men who identified as Democrat has gone from 52 to 49% in that same time frame, so it's gone the other way. Uh, about 41% of millennial men identify as Republican compared to 39% in 2002. And then right now, 56% of women lead towards or affiliate themselves with the Democratic Party compared by, uh, with only 44% of men. Right. So the Republican Party and the primary voters in in in, uh, in the Republican primaries are now saying if you are even mildly, we keep saying that, but even a little bit disloyal, you're out. You have to go with this far right agenda. And I know we're always talking about the discord in in the Democratic uh, in the Democratic Party in the DNC, but. This cannot stand for that much longer. When you have a leader that is this extreme and the voters who are active in their elections saying every single Republican has to be as extreme um, as, as our, our leader. I don't know how it is sustainable long-term. Yeah, I've been wondering that. There was an op-ed recently in the Washington Post that, point, I guess it was today, that um, pointed out another little aspect of this to kind of close the circle, which was women who identify as Democrats, according to a recent poll, were significantly more likely to say they were absolutely certain to actually go and vote in 2018 than their peers who say they're either independent or Republican. So it's a growing number of people, uh, of women who are millennials who say that they're Democrat and they are extremely likely to actually put that new ideological affiliation into practice in the polls. This line was made for you and me. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I did, I just kind of had enough, I did. I, uh, I, I felt really protective of uh, the reputation of, of, uh, of the church, of Christ, of, uh, of what we stand for. And um, when Mr. Trump would call himself a Christian and then call someone a bimbo, or when he'd hold up a Bible one day and then make fun of a reporter's menstrual cycle the next, uh, when he would be crude and uh, almost barbaric, uh, the, the kind of stuff that middle schoolers do in the locker room, 
I said, this just isn't right. It, it, somebody needs to say something. And I, and I kind of kept thinking somebody would. Uh, but when no one did, and it just got worse and worse, I said, I, I'm just going to see what happens. And so I wrote the blog. And within 36 hours, it had been uh, read uh, nearly 4 million times. And uh, it got picked up by the Washington Post. And it's gotten a lot of stir. I, I, maybe I hit a nerve. Maybe I'm not the only, not everybody likes what I said, and that's okay. I, like you said, I'm focusing not on policy, but on tone, on demeanor, right. uh, on the way he comports himself. And I just don't think it's consistent, uh, you know, with, with, right. with the way he should be talking. If he calls himself a Christian, he needs to talk a certain way and behave a certain way. Inappropriate, we call it out never called to be judgmental. In no way can we look down on somebody's behavior. But we are called to look into somebody's behavior and, and, and see how it aligns with the faith. And that's a good point. Eighty-one percent of white evangelicals voted for Donald Trump in the previous election. That's a record. That's more white evangelicals than voted for George W. Bush, and George W. Bush was a white evangelical. This makes no sense to people, especially when you consider that Trump is not just the most irreligious president in modern history, that his entire worldview makes a mockery of core Christian values like humility and empathy and care for the poor. Um, that this individual, who couldn't even name a single verse in the Bible when asked to do so, and yet, and yet, received a record number of votes by white evangelicals. This land is your land, this land is mine.